streaming and hello everybody I'm just gonna be waiting here a second till I find out if I'm actually live so and we're live now so hello everybody to our third edition of uh, the joy of image and manipulation uh, and we'll go into that and here we are uh, a little bit later than usual but that's okay uh, there's our art and what we're going to be doing this week is making this uh, picture I took a uh, Justin Robert Young from a Diamond Club two years ago at uh, Nerdtacular and uh, the idea was at at the time I was doing uh, I called it the what is it the National Infertinator which was uh, a mock-up of like the National Enquirer with all frog pants people for Nerdtacular and the idea was to make Jury look like he, well had fake stories on it about how Daryl was the brother of Captain Picard, and Tom was sending secret signals through the uh, the current geek scoring system to Batman to help him fight crime and that. And one was that Justin Robert Young was actually the clone of Fidel Castro. So I had a little Castro sign and I needed a picture of him and got this. So this is the end result, but we shall see uh, how we got here from, well, how we got here from where we went from, not this one, oh, I, darn it, I closed the long, wrong one. All right, so what we're going to do is do what I did before, which is highlight everything except for this one going to delete it. Uh, no, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the image, duplicate. You don't need to see my big face there. I'm going to duplicate it. And after we duplicate it, we're going to erase everything and hide this and get rid of the effects. Uh, clear layer styles and also get the move tool here with the V so I'll sh show I'll block out the mask and so that's where I started off with this profile a jury and what I did is I took my selection tool quick selection tool and uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll actually show you what I did, and hopefully it'll show up. Um, and that's not showing up, so let's go to switch that up to... All right, here we go. So, went into camera raw. Now, there's a lot of darkness between the beard and the background, so to find out, like if I use the selection tour tool, when I go on the, on the beard, it'll all do the, the left-hand side there. So what I did to uh, make it easier to think, I brought up the, uh, brought up the exposure like this so it's easy to get the uh, the outline and then afterwards I I brought brought the exposure back down to a better level uh, so let's see and we'll have to change that back to back to here okay so after I had the the selection done 
of him, I made a mask, which is boom. So I went through a couple of uh, a couple of uh, attempts to f try to make it seem like a uh, like a propaganda type. Excuse me, uh, prop propaganda type uh, poster. So I ended up. Oh, we'll go back to the move and move this over here and. Uh, I made this, which is a map of the plan of uh, their plan to take over the world. We got the contender going to North America and Diamond Club going to Europe and politics, politics, politics being going into Australia, night attack into Asia, jury, the jury show into... Uh, Africa and Hotline Monday going, of course, logically, logically to South America. Anyway, so what we do is we'll take the layer and duplicate the layer, but not in the original, but we'll put it into the copy. So, okay, and we'll move over here, and there's a the copy. Now what we're going to do, so we don't mess it up, is uh, make it into a smart object and that'll take a couple seconds all right and I will open up another another file to show you why turning something into a smart object is a smart thing to do so let me get a brush and let's say let's see we'll do an eye all right but of course what we have to do is put a layer first and let's see, I'll, instead of doing it freehand, I'll do an ellipse tool and move it over here. Okay. All right. And bring in some guidelines. But I don't need another one of those. I need one for coming from from on top, and I'll put a circle right there. We want it. Uh, say five hundred. No, that's not working. Do that. We'll just make a sense. So here we got an eye. Well. The outline of an eye. So what we'll do is we'll go to a, a nice blue. So we'll fill that in. And we shall we'll go take another And we'll make it a selection and we'll change the color to a nice sort of 
pinkish type, a little bit more red. So here's here's your basic eye. So the the reason doing uh, smart objects is important. I'm going to jump a copy of this eye over and then go back to the move and bring it down here. So this one I'll turn into a smart object. And layer one, we won't. So what I'm going to do is do a free transform, which lets, lets me increase the size. And we're going to really, really lower the size to about there and hit OK to make it like that. And then we'll do another free transform. And bring it back up and you look how oh well it's not as bad as it looked but it's still not as when it was all pixelated there but you can see the difference between the original and the copy there the lines are not not uh, sharp they're kind of fuzzy now if I Go through another shrinkage of it. And then no T. It's getting worse. So you see it it's it's kind of fuzzy. However, if we went to the one in the smart object. I'll do it, free transform it, and make it real small, and then free transform it again. It looks just the same. So we put it in smart a smart object so we can resize it and manipulate it without changing the original the original image. Uh, so it's sort of like taking a putting it I've heard it described as putting it in a in a envelope that protects it and you can scrooge up the envelope or stretch it that and then the same th the uh, original will still stay the same anyway so we'll get rid of this one because that was just an example and we'll go back to here so we've got the uh, the map in uh, smart object so it can't be hurt unless we double click in the thing and um so you can you can make changes to the image so let's see uh let's see i'll get a big slosh of pink through there and we'll save that and we go back to that and oh, it's still thinking. So you see, there's the pink there. But if we go back into that and we go go back, do the reverse, and save that again. Oh. We can. As it's saving, it'll go back to the copy, and it's nice. And uh, there's no pink stripe going through it. So anyway, so what we want to do is give this a sort of a background because this cross hatch in the background just means that it's transparency. So if if you uh, there's no background to it, so let's give it a background. Uh, what we're going to do is hold down the command key because I'm on Mac and it's control key if you're on Windows and if I had five cents for every time I've heard 
that on uh, the uh, the uh, tutorials that I've listened to, I'd, I'd be be rich. Anyway, so we'll go change. We've got a layer in behind, and we shall make blue the foreground color here in in our swatch, and hit option backspace, which will fill the background layer with a nice blue. Uh, but there, it's so the the picture of Jerry's okay. Want to make a bit more, uh, make it a little bit more. Uh, oh, what is it called? Darn it! Uh, give it a little bit more more contrast to it. So there's two ways we can do it. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump a copy of that going to a going to rasterize it so I can work on it and I'm going to apply the layer mask so there's just jury there I'll do that so one way well, and I'll actually make a second copy too because I'm gonna do a different way one way to bring out more contrast is to do a high pass filter which is down here under under uh, the filters and the others of course that doesn't show up on this but so we'll so what it basically does is makes it everything gray but it it finds the the places where it transitions from a light color to a dark color and uh, highlights it so it will look like this so sort of a almost like a uh, a coin thing so what you do first we we're going to there's some color to it so what we will do is go to image adjustments and hmm. uh, no we will we'll do it a different way we'll go to do a hue saturation layer and link it to that and bring the saturation down to zero so it's a black and white black and white image and now what we do is change the blending mode I'll bring back the original blending mode from normal which makes it gray and shades of gray to the overlay thing which does let's see make that into a group so it brings out a lot of a lot of detail in his hair and in, in the beard or we can change the it from overlay to soft light which isn't as harsh or we can go in the vivid light which really brings up the 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 contrast the the highlights although it does look him make him look a little bit older than he actually is uh, so we we can actually bring down the opacity to to taste but there is another way I'll turn that off that we can do it we'll go back to this copy that I made and what we do is make yet again another copy uh, if any of you let's see any of you seen negatives of pictures you know like from when we used to make photos with film and you get it back from the 
the lab and there's little brown things you look and the colors look funny well that's the negative that is the opposite of what is printed because when with the when they develop pictures they put the the uh, what the paper that the pictures on in behind the negative and they shoot light through and the uh, the the light the color they want at a specific place they do the polar opposite of so the the white light goes through and if you want red you have the place where you want red has all of the colors that aren't red on it so the white light goes through it gets absorbed in that and the re only the red goes through anyway long explanation we're going to we're going to invert this to make jury into a negative and well we can turn this one off because that's what we have to do uh, we change the the blending option from normal to is it linear yeah to a linear dodge brackets add and it turns them white but what you can do is go into the filter and go to blur gallery not blur gallery just to blur and get a Gaussian blur going and so with with it, it's like two two images that are the exact opposite right on them right on themselves so with the blur you move them a little bit which as I increase the blur you can see details coming out so it, it looks sort of like a uh, a drawing although there's still color to this so what I'm going to do is copy the hue saturation from our high pass example close that down and link it to this but that's not going to work we'll turn that off we're back to here I'll make a copy of these two Obviously, because I only have these two, it won't go, won't allow, but what we'll do is we'll merge the visible, which makes a copy of these two layers here. I'll go, these two layers, uh, copy three and copy two, into a single layer. And we'll see there's a little bit of red in the shirt, and a little bit of flesh color around the nose if I link oh that has to be turned on and then we get the colors off and turn this we'll turn the background of the original this one and turn that one back on and change the blending options to soft light again and will it lightens them up again and then we could change the opacity to taste but let's see maybe let's not go with a saturation we'll, we'll garbage that and instead do a black and white 
layer. Link it to there and put that on still on soft light and turn on the original and that is well that's okay I guess. So we've got jury bit of uh, contrast in there. Uh, I'll put that in a group too. But we also want to do stuff with the original. So I'm going to click here on the original and give him what was. Uh, excuse me for a second. I'm going to check the original. I did an outer glow on him. All right. So don't need that open. To double click on here and get uh, but you don't see this either because only anyway we're gonna put an outer glow with him that will, will help I guess we'll cancel first and we'll put on the the background and Put the outer glow again. Oh, I know why that. Okay, we're going to leave that till later. Because we shall bring in the map in the background and we're going to change its blending, blending mode from normal. Let's see what multiply looks like. That's. All right, well, I'll let darken. No. Soft light? Nope. So, screen? No, we're going to go back to one of the color burn. Uh, linear burn. Yeah, that's okay for now. Uh, and we'll bring in the quote that uh, I got from Twitter from apparently from jury saying I'm just pointing out a problem I'm not trying to solve it and uh, on the tweet he said he wanted that to be on his grave but will that's be years and years away so this is well, let's go back to the original and see what I'm missing uh, not a glow. Okay, so back to the one in progress. It it, it looks rather flat. Uh, so to give it a little bit of drama, I'm going to do another layer in between the orig behind the original. And I'm going to put a gradient in G and get the gradient. So I'm going to change that color is OK, but the. No, we're going to that we're going to make a little bit darker. That's good. Um, and our gradient is set to. set to foreground to transparent which is what we're looking for and we shall click here about nose level and hold down the shift so we do it in a straight line and boom we I think we're gonna darken that up a bit and redo it and maybe go mid map one more time. All right, so it gives it a little bit of darkness. And this is why, in the original, I had the outer glow to let him, make him stand out from the background a little bit. 
Now we're going to work on the the size a bit because it's there we go that'll be okay all right and what we're gonna also do is go back to that layer with the gradient that we had and play around with it uh, we've got other filters we can do we're gonna add some no not some noise uh, stylize, sure, no, it's pixelate. We want to pixelate something. So we can do, well, let's see. We, we've got time. We've got nothing better to do. Uh, we will we'll do the crystallize thing. And now I understand you're not seeing the pop up. But that crystallize isn't doing anything. So let's go to another filter and go to, f well, let's try fragment. See how does that. I didn't well did something but it, there's it's one I don't have control over you just do it so let's go and hit mosaic see what kind of effect I can have So we'll increase the cell size. All right, so basically it's from this mosaic, it's just going to make it in like different lines. So we're not going to do that. Let's see what did, well, what we'll do with what I originally did, which is a mesotint which changes the background and you can do fine dots but I'm going to use long strokes instead and click that so we get that kind of uh, oh, old time cathode ray TVs after TV channels go off for the day do you remember that? they didn't go 24 hours a day with their uh, Dr. Hogue commercials and the super duper skillet anymore, they'd turn off and there'd be static. So it looks sort of staticky there. And uh, I just want to do something f with the map to make it make it stand out a bit. So what I'll do is I'll give it an outer glow as well. But Not so sure about that. Uh, maybe increase the size. No. Well, I'm definitely going to take down the noise. And spread. Nope. Let's forget about the glow and put in a drop shadow. No. Of uh, inner glow. Ooh, that that's nice. But we'll do, set it back to normal, and we'll put that should do it. Although. from screen to light and nope that doesn't make much difference color dodge uh, let's 
too much. Liner dodge. Yeah, I think that's that'll be okay. So we'll brighten it up a little bit. Okay, and we'll put in a little thing above. We shall hit the D to go default colors and get to the white. Pick my brush, and I got a, cu a custom brush here, and bring down the thing, and there we go. I'm thinking that is probably done for th today. Um, Yep, yeah, so that, that's it for today's episode. Uh, if you got any questions, uh, my address addresses are up there. My uh, Gmail account, fishydigitalphoto at gmail.com. That's fishy with a PH and photo with an F because it, well, because that's the way it is, or www.facebook.com slash fishydigitalphoto. And uh, I'll see you next week and have something else to show you what we're doing. Anyway, thanks. Have a good week.